Good morning and welcome to this um, today's topic of uh, tracheostomy. And uh, before that, I wish to welcome you all to my channel, YouTube channel, Pain Free Partha. And also, all my slides are freely downloadable from www.painfreepartha.com. So this topic is about tracheostomy, which is itself is a big book. So it is very difficult to cover within 25 to 30 minutes or something like that. So it is this topic is more oriented towards going for MD rather than critical care and RV specialists. So greetings from Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Sri Balaj Vidya Pink. And what is tracheostomy actually? What is tracheostomy? If you can see. Tracheotomy refers to the formation of a surgical opening in the trachea. Now, for example, there is a trachea. You open this. That is what is called tracheotomy. Whenever the yes comes, stomy comes, it is related to the connection between the skin. That is what is the basic thing, gastrostomy, jejunostomy, something like that. When you say is continued with yes, then it becomes automatically a permanent stoma between the trachea and the cervical skin, neck skin, that is what is called tracheostomy. That's the difference between tracheotomy and tracheostomy. This is this fellow Chevalier Jackson. He has got a lot of instruments and he was a head and neck surgery specialist, so called. Even though it was first described in Rig Veda in 2000 BC, Chevalier Jackson only popularized it. And this was used even for treating diphtheria. So, this the name goes to Chevalier Jackson, even though it was described previously. What are the four functions of the trachea? It just passage of air, mucociliary clearance, warming the hair, and humidification. Yes, it does part of it, even though there is other parts like nose do this. Trachea has also a natural trachea has also got these four functions of airway passages, mucociliary clearance, warming, and humidification. Now we go to what are the indications of tracheostomy? When to do this tracheostomy? A mechanical obstruction of the upper airways. For example, you have got a cancer larynx. Protection of the tracheobronchial tree in patients at risk of aspiration. Respiratory failure. Retention of bronchial secretions by normal endotracheal tube or a normal cough is not able to do, bring out the secretions. Elective tracheostomy in a major head and neck surgery. The surgeon is going to open like this and going to put the flap like this and is going to take the flap like this. Definitely, maybe we may be needing an elective tracheostomy can provide improved surgical access and facilitate ventilation. Now, if you have a tube here from here, and if the surgery is here, it is very difficult to do a tracheostomy here, and the surgeon can very well handle these areas freely, and they can facilitate your surgical access. So, if you want to classify it mechanical, congenital infective malignancy, there are a lot of laryngeal vallicular cysts, Acute epiglottitis, laryngeotracheal bronchitis, diphtheria, advanced tumors of the larynx, mechanical trauma, if vocal cord paralysis in patients with post op thyroid, or sometimes some other surgery, foreign body swallow are inhaled in the upper airway, causing strider. There are so many neurological diseases, Willenbari syndrome, bulbar palsy, previously poly, polio, motor neuron disease, and especially when the Glasgow coma scale goes below 8 and the patient of coma, yes. Respiratory failure, pulmonary diseases, severe asthma, all these things, retention of bronchial secretions, chronic pulmonary diseases. These were all described originally. But now, what are the indications? The indications means if you think your intubation is going to be prolonged, there are a lot of uh, ifs and no's, pros and cons about an early tracheostomy or delayed tracheostomy, with which I am not going into. Do you, you think you are striking? Yes, this 
ventilator may need another 10 days, 15 days. Yes, put the tracheostomy down. Inability to manage secretions. Yes, the endotracheal tube is in. We are pushing in. Yes, you are not able to get stuck. I have done what happened this. Twice I have clogged. That was clogged. I extubated and immediately all that went with emergence. So when you are not able to handle the secretions, manage the secretions, then it is facilitation of ventilation support. Your inability to intubate, adjunct to manage head and surgery and head and neck trauma. Now, why are we worried about this tracheostomy? What does it do to the normal physiology? Because even though the warming and humidification is done by the natural trachea, and if you have done tracheostomy and put the tube down, yes, warming, humidification, filtering affair do not take place, and your normal nasal, oral, pharyngeal, all these things have gone. He cannot talk. He cannot swallow with ease. The cough reflex is blunted. All these things you can see is very nicely coughing out to the trachea. Now you have put a tube like this and you are ventilating like this. Where you will go swallow, where you will make a voice. All these things are problematic when he has problems with physiology. But what is the advantage? You have put the tube here straight from there. Your resistance, dead space, everything comes down. You are able to ventilate better. Pneumonias are less. Suction is easier. We don't need to sedate much. The patient is comfortable rather than over it. All these things make, yes, tracheostomy's advantages over prolonged endotracheal tube intubations. These are all classical teachings. There are a lot of journal articles which has come with some minimal altering hypothesis. Classic teachings dictate tracheostomy. When to do, you think your intubation and ventilation has crossed seven days. That's the classical teaching. The development of low pressure cuff tubes, very low pressure cuff tubes have come and we, we know how to manage the pressure of the cuff. All these things have come to extend the likelihood of intubation to 10 days or something like that before we open upon a tracheostomy. Informed consent, neck examination, bleeding disorders, a good assistant, fostering should be avoided because it may produce recurrent stenosis. Go to the second and third legs. So that is the space at which you need to palpate and get it. Emergency or elective. Mostly elective are done by the ENT surgeons. And emergencies sometimes may be the other ones. Now, if you want to position the patient here, you can see there is one. Here you can see one and slightly the head is down. The beautifully the neck is, front of neck is, should be like this. The front of neck should be like this. That is what you keep small bubble, small towel here, big towel here, big towel there. All these things does not matter. You need to have an endotracheal tube which is very well ventilating and your neck should be like this. This is the position for tracheostomy. Now you can put it here like this, here like this. All these things manage. Yes, your incision is around the second ring or third ring. Anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. This is anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. This is a low tracheostomy if you go a little lower. And all these things matter. Open up. You are opening up the thyroid isthmus. And then open, cut the trachea like this. And get the endotracheal tube into this. Parts of the tracheostomy tubules, the outer cannula, the neck flange, the pilot balloon, the balloon valve, the inflation channel. This is the cuff. The inner cannula will go in and the obturator will go in like this into this. So we have to put all these things, remove the obturator, only the 15 millimeter connector to start ventilating. If you have a dual tubes, there are mono one tube also there are dual tube cells there may be different curves this type of curves this types of curves to suit the patients what is the size of the tracheostomy tube we put normally eight size tracheostomy tube for a male 7.5 for a female or 7.57 for a male and female the axon sizing system starts from two and it does not have 
anything system like that. It starts from 2, 2.5, 3 and 8 and all. An international standards organization sizing system is what is needed where it tells the inner diameter of the inner tube. That is 7.5 millimeters. Outer tube is there. Inner tube is there. In the inner tube, what inner diameter is what is the size of the tracheostomy tube. The outer diameter of the outer tube should be three-fourths of the inner diameter of the trachea. Now you have a trachea like this and you have two tubes like this. The outer tube order, outer diameter, this should be three-fourths the inner diameter of the trachea. This is what is needed. So to minimize the trauma of the tracheal wall and to avoid long-term complications. Now the trachea is 20 millimeters width, 12 to 14 centimeters in length, and we put a 7.5 or 8 millimeter only. To say the outer diameter of the outer tube should be three-fourths of the inner diameter of the trachea. This is what we want. That is why we put 7.5, 8 millimeters tracheostomy tubes. What do you mean by inner cannula, outer cannula is to clear secretions through cleaning or replacement at regular intervals. So it may contain the standard 15 millimeter adapter. So it is to clear secretions. Now suddenly it has got stuck, remove the inner cannula and clear it and then put it again and start ventilating again. Your suction, your secretion, your blocks, everything has gone out. That is the purpose of an inner cannula. The obturator assists in insertion of the tracheostomy tube. It is necessary to remove in order for the obturator to fit within the outer cannula. So always keep it in vision. So this is the obturator part one, outer cannula, inner cannula, all these things. The purpose of the neck flange is to stabilize the tracheostomy tube. Neck flange, just put it like that. So that it goes around the neck and we have got good gauze pieces. The pilot balloon inflation, the capillary perfusion pressure is between 20 to 30. So high pressure, barrel, foam, teardrop, so much of cuff differences are there. So what we use is low pressure cuffs. Here you can see innumerable type of cuffs, oval, rectangular, big oval like this. Now you have got a single cannula or a double cannula. That is what I told, inner tube, outer tube is there in double cannula. It may be either cuff or uncuff. Double cannula, cuff or uncuff. It may be unique, fenestrated. Holes are there for the talking to go on when the patient is tracheostomized. Big size. Dual cannula, it is cuff and uncuff. This is the inner cannula which has gone in, but it is uncuff. Here there is an inner cannula, but it is cuff. Single cannula may be there, cuff and uncuff. Talking and fixed flange. So these are the, some of the holes in this. I will come back again to this. Now here, this is going to the lungs. We are ventilating. And the, to the larynx here. And normally, because of the cuff, it is going towards here. And if it pushes the ball into this, then automatically it has to escape through this and to the larynx. So this is what is this. So this is what is the talking tracheostomy. These are all the trunk, the vocal cords and inspiration, these valves, talking walls. There may be fenestrations here also for the talking to go on. Flange is adjusted. This is, can, you can adjust the flange here or sometimes that flange is fixed. Armored tubes, the tube is armored. You can see flexometallic. These tracheostomy tubes are also available. Extra long with suction ports here. Now you see, this is the tracheostomy tube. This is the inflating channel and the balloon. Now you have this thing. This goes in and keeps it here. At this place, it sucks in. So suction is there for the exactly just cuff region. There is no secretion. That is what this is supposed to cause increased incidence of pneumonias. So that is what is called, they say subglottic suction here. Here we can do subcuff suction, so called. 
You can have metal tubes with obturators, metal tubes with fenestrations. There is an inner tube here, there is an outer tube here. These are all fenestrations or holes. Originally, they were color coding of the tubes. Orange is 6, green is 7, white is 8, blue is 9, yellow is 10. So these are all the steps of and uses of a tracheostomy. So we have gone into, this is mostly done as an emergency or sometimes a semi-emergency. But what is actually done in elective SAM is a percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy. Go through the skin, you dilate the pathways and insert the tracheostomy. This is what is known as PDT. Is defined as the placement of a tracheostomy tube. Then See, there are series of dilators which are commercially available. Use them, slowly dilate, put the tube in from the skin. Percutaneous. This is what is called PDT. Now, the most commonly available are so many things are there. The blue rhino is there. Without direct visualization of the trachea. What are the prerequisites? Should have adequate pain relief sedation, sometimes neuromuscular blockade, already intubated and mechanically ventilated patients. Cannot be used for emergency airway management. You have got a supraglottic foreign body or edema. We cannot use it for cutaneous dilatation on all these things. Orofacial trauma. So this is this is a different issue, thing which we should know. It is not much useful for real emergencies. We should plan and do things. Percutaneous dilatations. Otherwise, the indications are similar. Patients under the age of 16 years, obvious deformities of the airway, previous scars from surgeries, tumors. You have got a surgery here, tumor here, um, or deformity here, airway is deformed. All these things make questions about percutaneous. Inability to optimally extend like this. Some arthritis is here, some trauma is here, all these things. Hemodynamically unstable, difficult diabetes, all these things put all these things in question. Monitors and line, time is between 30 versus 60 minutes, cost and less trauma, less bleeding, less infection, and decannulation is easier. Scar is less. This is what is the advantages. You can do it and less trauma, less bleeding, less chance of infection. You can take out decannulation is easier because we have put in a smaller incision and the scar is less. All these things, scar inside the skin, subcutaneous fat and also in the trachea. The scar of the trachea is also less. That means whatever the post-scar complications also are less with PDTs. Direct cost is less. Nasogastric feeding is stopped at least two hours prior. Stomach contents are emptied. Position is similar. Do 100% oxygen. Give some sedation, fentanyl or diazepam or even rocuronium. And then ventilator settings are adjusted for leaks. All monitors to continue. You have to introduce through the endotracheal tube the fiber optic scope and slowly withdraw the tube and slightly cuff is inflated. Then ultimate tube placement is made at the level of the second cartilage. A midline subcry cord, only two millimeter incision. You see here, two or three millimeters. Here you can put a two millimeter incision, and this is the cricothyroid membrane. This is the first tracheal ring, second tracheal ring. We are in the second tracheal space. Put this thing, and then go into this trachea. We can see this because we have got an endotracheal tube here, and we have got a fiber optic bronchoscope here. And we can see we have just opened, lightly opened up the tube, lifted up the tube to see this through the fiber optic bronchoscope or a laryngoscope. This, this is in, the dilator is coming and slowly the size dilators, dilator positioning mark, guide wire, skin positioning mark, you start dilating. You need six or seven dilators here in the trachea, then followed by your tracheostomy tube. So these are taken from the internet for close to academic purpose only. Now we have put that tube. What has to be done after that? We are connected to the ventilator. How are you going to care for the tracheostomy? Extra tracheostomy tube, one size smaller should be there. Obturator should be there. Suction catheter should be there. Manual ambu bag should be there. Oxygen source is there. For an emergency endotracheal tube should be there. And dressings, 
and give holders tracheostomy cleaning kits. All these things make these are all, it looks like one big, small things which we routinely do. Endotracheal tube, smaller tracheostomy, suction oxygen, ambu bag, and also your cleaning things. This is the basic things. Security flange suturing should be done seven days from the transition, immature to a mature tracheostomy. Because it takes now you put in the tracheostomy. If it comes out day after tomorrow only, it is very difficult to insert again. Accidental decanalation is very difficult because the stoma is immature. We can go somewhere else. But if it seven days crosses, then we are in for a stable, mature stoma. So it, even if it comes out and accidentally, we can the stoma is clear, a pathway is clear, we can put it in like that. Two to three times a day, recommend inner cannula cleaning should be placed in a container of hydrogen peroxide allowed to soak for three to five minutes in order to soften and dissolve the hydrogen peroxide always what it does is you no know, it's a smooth and soft and stick mucus plugs that is the advantage of hydrogen peroxide the stoma can be cleaned and the cotton swabs dipped in saline so this is how the inner cannula two to three times you put it in soak in hydrogen peroxide wipe it out clean and then put it in don't push the hydrogen peroxide inside the tracheostomy Cleaning metal tracheostomy tubes. Place the tube in a pan of tap water and boil for 30 minutes, wiping the cool tubes. Lines of tracheostomy tube should be cleaned with a mild detergent. The entire tracheostomy tube should be changed on a regular basis in order to prevent infections. Sometimes it may be two to three weeks or it may be two change. First change may be difficult and after that everyone does. Care of the stoma. 3% hydrogen peroxide is clean around the stoma because this Encrustations pus will be there. Remove all these things and with hydrogen peroxide solution, clean it off and then put beta 9 or whatever it is. Again, put the things. Go blood cells up to 100 ml per se. Cough if present is okay, but in these patients, very will go to cough when needed than routine. Suctioning frequency of every eight hours in order to reduce accumulation. Eight hours once is okay. Clinical signs that indicates yes, audible sounds are there. Grr, grr, grr. Patient is dysnic, airway pressure is going up, unexplained desaturation. Yes, if it is very simple, if the tracheostomy gets blocked, what will happen? He cannot breathe or she cannot breathe. So, the ventilator is obstructing, so airway pressure is going up, saturation is coming down. All these things make yes, they have to do such. And he will do all these things. And if you sedate at the time, you are in for a danger. Patient is moving, cognitive dysfunction, sedate, when there is a small obstruction of a tracheostomy tube. So, go in, clear the secretions, take out the inner tube, then, then you treat whatever it is after you are convinced with the, your ventilation with a tracheostomy tube. Treat your cognitive dysfunction. What else formula for catheter size? The size of the endotracheal tube or tracheostomy minus 2 into 2, strange catheter. 8 tracheostomy tube. 8 minus 2 into 2, 6 into 2, 12 French size suction catheters. So, what is 12 French? What is French gauge? What is standard wire gauge? There is a separate video, a very small video previously in this YouTube channel of Pain Free Party. When suction is applied, secretions as well as oxygen are removed. So, desaturation may get arrhythmias. Suction should be applied for less than 12 seconds with a suction pressure of minus 80 to minus 120 millimeters of mercury. So 12 seconds, beware of arrhythmias. So you should see whether it is effective. Suction we are doing, something is coming or not coming. That is what is important. So that determines your frequency of suction. Hyperoxygenation is the delivery of greater than concentration of patients already up to 100%, up to 150% for at least three breaths. Then you do your suction. So increase your tidal volume, increase your FIO. For then you do a suction. Introduction of suction catheters at the level of carina, and then with the drawing two centimeters, deep or shallow, mild bleeding is okay. Closed or open sections. Installation of 2 ml followed by manual ventilation has been loosening and thinning secretions were there. Now we are going in for closed sections. We are in for a section and then we remove that thing. Tuck, the negative pressure automatically goes in, suctioned out, it is connected to your bag, and then we close again. This is closed suction units. Humidification can be provided by a collar or 
atomized solene or HME, heat moisture exchanger for around five days. Even a small physical movement can mobilize secretions. So if you don't give oral care, if you are at a tracheostomy, they are in for a ventilator associated pneumonias. So even if you go at a tracheostomy and start ventilating, you should do oral care. Home emergencies, remove inner cannula, suction deeply, put in a manual resuscitation bag, and if you're doubt, it is change the tracheostomy tube. What are the intraoperative complications? Yes, bleeding, anterior jugular vein. Pneumothorax or pneumobedia stenum. Difficult cannulations. If you are given high oxygen will be given by the anesthetist. We are giving. They are doing this thing. That can cause airway fires. Airway embolisms. Pneumothorax and this is what is very common. Just as soon as they put the tracheostomy tube inside, you disconnect from the endotracheal tube. Don't remove the endotracheal tube. And connect it to the tracheostomy and start ventilating. See the capnograph. See the airway pressure. What was the previous airway pressure? All these things you analyze. Wait for some time. Whether the tracheostomy is ventilating very well or it is tricking into the mediastinum, it is going into the tracheal wall. Confirm and then remove your endotracheal tube. Tracheostomy tubes, displacement and loss of airway, tube obstruction, post obstructive pulmonary edema, neomedostinum, or all these complications, it is better to have an X ray chest and a lung ultrasound before contemplating any complications. Late post operative complications, it may be tracheal esophageal or tracheal cutaneous or tracheal stenosis or tracheal malacia or tracheal inaminate artery fistula. Yes, these are all the various complications. This is given in Benimov's airway management. What is pistoning? It goes in and this goes in like this and goes on come like this. You see, see the air is going, the cuff is also going like this. Air is coming out, the cuff is going. This is what is called pistoning. This is pistoning is a sliding piece mode or moving against. This is physics. This can happen. And if this happens, sometimes if it goes in like this, it may partially obstruct your stoma. Decannulation. Okay, now we have put the tracheostomy tube. When will we remove the tracheostomy tube? When the reason for tracheostomy is solved, now if the patient has got multiple sclerosis, if the patient has got some bulbar polio or Gullenbari syndrome, which has not recovered at all, think about decannulation. Your primary disease is gone. For example, an organophosphorus compound poisoning. Everything is fine. He has become conscious. His so-called cholinistry level has been stabilized. Your primary disease has gone. Then think. Your airway secretions have abated and still your mechanical ventilation is no longer required, then you think of removing the tracheostomy tube. And it may be 12 days, 25 days, sometimes 3 years. Is the reason for placement is the most essential thing. Safe to consider downsizing and decannulation in some times. So you, you remove this and put a 6.5 and slowly give the patient ventilation. All these things are practiced. The tracheostomy tube can be decannulated after the obstruction is relieved. The two primary mechanisms that contribute to airway protection are adequate cough and adequate swallow. The failure of patients to manage secretions is a con yes. If you plan to remove this and he has to cough like this and throw out, that is very important. If he is not got the power to remove the secretions, the fundamental funda of putting the removing the tracheostomy tube will be gone like that. So we have to be careful. Not only it is ventilation of this thing, because we have clear indications. Removal of bronchial secretion is an indication of tracheostomy. So that indication has not come up. He has not got the muscle power. He has not got this power to remove the secretions by his own. Yes, wait. Fenestrations for trial breathing is there. Decannulation is the deliberate and permanent removal of the tracheostomy tube. Remove cuff 30 minutes, block 24 hours, and then decannulate. Block it, simply close that. Then wait for the patient to breathe. Remove the cuff before blocking. Remove the cuff because if the cuff is inflated and if you are blocked, you cannot breathe. Open, completely deflate the cuff. There are fenestrations through the sides of the cuff, you will breathe. So capping. And you can also do a bronchoscopy. So, yes, remove the tube and put a thing. Stubic, sometimes in the 1990s and 2020s. Thank you.
all these slides should be pain-free.